Juan Ponce de Leon Spanish pronunciation, XWAM Pon Theta Ee La on, 1474 July 1521 was a Spanish explorer and conquistador born in Santervas de Campos, Valladolid, Spain in 1474. Though little is known about his family, he was of noble birth and served in the Spanish military from a young age. He first came to the Americas as a gentleman volunteer with Christopher Columbus's second expedition in 1493. By the early 1500s, Ponce de Leon was a top military official in the colonial government of Hispaniola, where he helped crush a rebellion of the native Taino people. He was authorized to explore the neighboring island of Puerto Rico in 1508 and was named the first governor of Puerto Rico by appointment of the Spanish crown in 1509. While Ponce de Leon grew quite wealthy from his plantations and mines, he faced an ongoing legal conflict with Diego Columbus, the late Christopher Columbus's son, over the right to govern Puerto Rico. After a long court battle, Columbus replaced Ponce de Leon as governor in 1511. Ponce de Leon decided to follow the advice of the sympathetic King Ferdinand and explore more of the Caribbean Sea. In 1513, Ponce de Leon led the first known European expedition to La Florida, which he named during his first voyage to the area. He landed somewhere along Florida's east coast, then charted the Atlantic coast down to the Florida Keys and north along the Gulf Coast, perhaps as far as Charlotte Harbor. Though in popular culture he was supposedly searching for the Fountain of Youth, there is no contemporary evidence to support the story, which all modern historians call a myth. Ponce de Leon returned to Spain in 1514 and was knighted by King Ferdinand, who also reinstated him as the governor of Puerto Rico and authorized him to settle Florida. He returned to the Caribbean in 1515, but plans to organize an expedition to Florida were delayed by the death of King Ferdinand in 1516, after which Ponce de Leon again traveled to Spain to defend his grants and titles. He would not return to Puerto Rico for two years. In 1521, Ponce de Leon finally returned to southwest Florida with the first large-scale attempt to establish a Spanish colony in what is now the continental United States. However, the native Calusa people fiercely resisted the incursion, and he was seriously wounded in a skirmish. The colonization attempt was abandoned, and its leader died from his wounds soon after returning to Cuba. Ponce de Leon was interred in Puerto Rico, and his tomb is located inside of the Cathedral of San Juan Bautista in San Juan. Topic. Spain Juan Ponce de Leon was born in the village of Santervas de Campos in the northern part of what is now the Spanish province of Valladolid. Although early historians placed his birth in 1460, and this date has been used traditionally, more recent evidence shows he was likely born in 1474. The surname Ponce de Leon dates from the 13th century. The Ponce de Leon lineage began with Ponce Velas de Cabrera, descendant of Count Bermudo Núñez, and Sancha Ponce de Cabrera, daughter of Ponce Geraldo de Cabrera. Before October 1235, a son of Ponce Vila de Cabrera and his wife Teresa Rodriguez Gorin named Pedro Ponce de Cabrera married Aldonza Alfonso, an illegitimate daughter of King Alfonso IX of Leon. The descendants of this marriage added the de Leon to their patronymic and were known henceforth as the Ponce de Leon. The identity of his parents is still unknown, but he appears to have been a member of a distinguished and influential noble family. His relatives included Rodrigo Ponce de Leon, Marquis of Cadiz, a celebrated figure in the Moorish Wars. Ponce de Leon was related to another notable family, the Núñez de Guzmans, and as a young man he served as squire to Pedro Núñez de Guzmán, knight commander of the Order of Calatrava. A contemporary chronicler, Gonzalo Fernández de Oviedo y Valdez, states that Ponce de León gained his experience as a soldier fighting in the Spanish campaigns that defeated the Moors in Granada and completed the reconquest of Spain in 1492. <laughs> <laughs> Arrival in the New World Once the war against the Emirate of Granada ended, there was no apparent need for his military services at home, so, like many of his contemporaries, Ponce de Leon looked abroad for his next opportunity. In September 1493, some 1,200 sailors, colonists, and soldiers joined Christopher Columbus for his second voyage to the New World. Ponce de Leon was a member of this expedition, one of 200 gentlemen volunteers. The fleet reached the Caribbean in November 1493. 
They visited several islands before arriving at their primary destination in Hispaniola. In particular they anchored on the coast of a large island the natives called Borincan but would eventually become known as Puerto Rico. This was Ponce de Leon's first glimpse of the place that would play a major role in his future. Historians are divided on what he did during the next several years, but it is possible that he returned to Spain at some point and made his way back to Hispaniola with Nicolas de Avando. Topic: <laughs> Hispaniola. In 1502, the newly appointed governor, Nicolas de Avando, arrived in Hispaniola. The Spanish crown expected Avando to bring order to a colony in disarray. Avando interpreted this as authorizing subjugation of the native Tainos. Thus, Avando authorized the Jaragua massacre in November 1503. In 1504, when Tainos overran a small Spanish garrison in Igüe on the island's eastern side, Avando assigned Ponce de Leon to crush the rebellion. Ponce de Leon was actively involved in the Igüe massacre, about which Friar Bartolomé de las Casas attempted to notify Spanish authorities. Avando rewarded his victorious commander by appointing him frontier governor of the newly conquered province, then named Igüe also. Ponce de Leon received a substantial land grant which authorized sufficient Indian slave labor to farm his new estate. Ponce de Leon prospered in this new role. He found a ready market for his farm produce and livestock at nearby Boca de Yuma where Spanish ships stocked supplies before the long voyage back to Spain. In 1505 Avando authorized Ponce de Leon to establish a new town in Igüe, which he named Salvalian. In 1508 King Ferdinand Queen Isabella having opposed the exploitation of natives but dying in 1504 authorized Ponce de Leon to conquer the remaining Tainos and exploit them in gold mining. Around this time, Ponce de Leon married Leonora, an innkeeper's daughter. They had three daughters Juana, Isabel and Maria and one son Luis. The large stone house Ponce de Leon ordered built for his growing family still stands today near the city of Salvalian de Igüe. <inaudible> Puerto Rico As provincial governor, Ponce de Leon had occasion to meet with the Tainos who visited his province from neighboring Puerto Rico. They told him stories of a fertile land with much gold to be found in the many rivers. Inspired by the possibility of riches, Ponce de Leon requested and received permission from Avando to explore the island. His first reconnaissance of the island is usually dated to 1508 but there is evidence that he had made a previous exploration as early as 1506. This earlier trip was done quietly because the Spanish crown had commissioned Vicente Yanez Pinzon to settle the island in 1505. Pinzon did not fulfill his commission and it expired in 1507, leaving the way clear for Ponce de Leon. His earlier exploration had confirmed the presence of gold and gave him a good understanding of the geography of the island. In 1508, Ferdinand II of Aragon gave permission to Ponce de Leon for the first official expedition to the island, which the Spanish then called San Juan Bautista. This expedition, consisting of about 50 men in one ship, left Hispaniola on July 12, 1508 and eventually anchored in San Juan Bay, near today's city of San Juan. Ponce de Leon searched inland until he found a suitable site about two miles from the bay. Here he erected a storehouse and a fortified house, creating the first settlement in Puerto Rico, Capara. Although a few crops were planted, the settlers spent most of their time and energy searching for gold. By early 1509 Ponce de Leon decided to return to Hispaniola. His expedition had collected a good quantity of the precious metal but was running low on food and supplies. The expedition was deemed a great success and Avando appointed Ponce de Leon governor of San Juan Bautista. This appointment was later confirmed by Ferdinand II on August 14, 1509. He was instructed to extend the settlement of the island and continue mining for gold. The new governor returned to the island as instructed, bringing with him his wife and children. Back on his island, Ponce de Leon parceled out the native Tainos amongst himself and other settlers using a system of forced labor known as encomienda. The Indians were put to work growing food crops and mining for gold. Many of the Spaniards treated the Tainos very harshly and newly introduced diseases like smallpox and measles took a severe toll on the local population. 
By June 1511 the Tainos were pushed to a short-lived rebellion, which was forcibly put down by Ponce de Leon and a small force of troops armed with crossbows and arquebuses. Even as Ponce de Leon was settling the island of San Juan, significant changes were taking place in the politics and government of the Spanish West Indies. On July 10, 1509, Diego Colón, the son of Christopher Columbus, arrived in Hispaniola as acting viceroy, replacing Nicolas de Avando. For several years Diego Colón had been waging a legal battle over his rights to inherit the titles and privileges granted to his father. The Crown regretted the sweeping powers that had been granted to Columbus and his heirs and sought to establish more direct control in the New World. In spite of the Crown's opposition, Colón prevailed in court and Ferdinand was required to appoint him viceroy. Although the courts had ordered that Ponce de Leon should remain in office, Cologne circumvented this directive on October 28, 1509 by appointing Juan Serran Chief Justice and Miguel Diaz Chief Constable of the island, effectively overriding the authority of the governor. This situation prevailed until March 2, 1510, when Ferdinand issued orders reaffirming Ponce de Leon's position as governor. Ponce de Leon then had Serran and Diaz arrested and sent back to Spain. The political struggle between Cologne and Ponce de Leon continued in this manner for the next few years. Ponce de Leon had influential supporters in Spain and Ferdinand regarded him as a loyal servant. However, Colón's position as viceroy made him a powerful opponent and eventually it became clear that Ponce de Leon's position on San Juan was not tenable. Finally, on November 28, 1511, Sarin returned from Spain and was officially reinstated as governor. <laughs> First voyage to Florida Rumors of undiscovered islands to the northwest of Hispaniola had reached Spain by 1511, and Ferdinand was interested in forestalling further exploration and discovery by Cologne. In an effort to reward Ponce de Leon for his services, Ferdinand urged him to seek these new lands outside the authority of Cologne. Ponce de Leon readily agreed to a new venture, and in February 1512 a royal contract was dispatched outlining his rights and authorities to search for the islands of Benemy. The contract stipulated that Ponce de Leon held exclusive rights to the discovery of Benemy and neighboring islands for the next three years. He would be governor for life of any lands he discovered, but he was expected to finance for himself all costs of exploration and settlement. In addition, the contract gave specific instructions for the distribution of gold, Native Americans, and other profits extracted from the new lands. Notably, there was no mention of a rejuvenating fountain. Ponce de Leon equipped three ships with at least 200 men at his own expense and set out from Puerto Rico on March 4, 1513. The only near contemporary description known for this expedition comes from Antonio de Herrera y Tordesillas, a Spanish historian who apparently had access to the original ship's logs or related secondary sources from which he created a summary of the voyage published in 1601. The brevity of the account and occasional gaps in the record have led historians to speculate and dispute many details of the voyage. The three ships in this small fleet were the Santiago, the San Cristobal and the Santa Maria de la Consolación. Anton de Alaminos was their chief pilot. He was already an experienced sailor, and would become one of the most respected pilots in the region. After leaving Puerto Rico, they sailed northwest along the great chain of Bahama Islands, known then as the Lucayos. On March 27, Easter Sunday, they sighted an island that was unfamiliar to the sailors on the expedition. Because many Spanish seamen were acquainted with the Bahamas, which had been depopulated by slaving ventures, some scholars believe that this island was actually Florida, as it was thought to be an island for several years after its formal discovery. Other scholars have speculated that this island was one of the northern Bahama Islands, perhaps Great Abaco. For the next several days the fleet crossed open water until April 2, 1513, when they sighted land which Ponce de Leon believed was another island. He named it La Florida in recognition of the verdant landscape and because it was the Easter season, which the Spaniards called Pascua Florida Festival of Flowers. The following day they came ashore to seek information and take possession of this new land. The precise location of their landing on the Florida coast has been disputed for many years. Some historians believe it occurred at or near St. Augustine, others prefer a more southern landing at a small harbor now called Ponce de Leon Inlet, but some also believe that Ponce came ashore even farther south near the present location of Melbourne Beach, a theory that has been criticized by some scholars in recent years. 
The latitude coordinate recorded in the ship's log closest to the landing site, reported by Herrera who had the original logbook in 1601, was 30 degrees, 8 minutes. This sighting was recorded at noon the day before with either a quadrant or a mariner's astrolabe, and the expedition sailed north for the remainder of the day before anchoring for the night and rowing ashore the following morning. This latitude corresponds to a spot north of St. Augustine between what is now the Guana Tolomato Matanzas National Estuarine Research Reserve and Ponte Vedra Beach. After remaining in the area of their first landing for about five days, the ships turned south for further exploration of the coast. On April 8 they encountered a current so strong that it pushed them backwards and forced them to seek anchorage. The tiniest ship, the San Cristobal, was carried out of sight and lost for two days. This was the first encounter with the Gulf Stream where it reaches maximum force between the Florida coast and the Bahamas. Because of the powerful boost provided by the current, it would soon become the primary route for eastbound ships leaving the Spanish Indies bound for Europe. They continued down the coast hugging the shore to avoid the strong head current. By May 4 the fleet reached and named Biscayne Bay and took on water at an island they named Santa Marta now Key Biscayne and explored the Tequesta Miami Mound town at the mouth of the Miami River. The Tequesta did not engage the Spanish, they evacuated into the coastal woodlands. On May 15 they left Biscayne Bay and sailed along the Florida Keys, looking for a passage to head north and explore the west coast of the Florida Peninsula. From a distance the Keys reminded Ponce de Leon of men who were suffering, so he named them Los Martyrs, the Martyrs. Eventually they found a gap in the reefs and sailed, to the north and other times to the northeast, until they reached the Florida mainland on May 23, where they encountered the Calusa, who refused to trade and drove off the Spanish ships by surrounding them with warriors in sea canoes armed with long bows. Again, the exact site of their landfall is controversial. The vicinity of Charlotte Harbor is the most commonly identified spot, while some assert a landing further north at Tampa Bay or even Pensacola. Other historians have argued the distances were too great to cover in the available time and the more likely location was Cape Romano or Cape Sable. Here Ponce de Leon anchored for several days to take on water and repair the ships. They were approached by Calusa, who might have been initially interested in trading but relations soon turned hostile. Several skirmishes followed with casualties on both sides and the Spaniards took eight Indians captive, including one to become a translator. On June 4, there was another encounter with natives near Sanibel Island and the Calusa in war canoes, with the Spanish sinking a fourth of them. An unsubstantiated claim to justify Spanish retreat, on June 14 they set sail again looking for a chain of islands in the west that had been described by their captives. They reached the Dry Tortugas on June 21. There they captured giant sea turtles, Caribbean monk seals, and thousands of seabirds. From these islands they sailed southwest in an apparent attempt to circle around Cuba and return home to Puerto Rico. Failing to take into account the powerful currents pushing them eastward, they struck the northeast shore of Cuba and were initially confused about their location. Once they regained their bearings, the fleet retraced their route east along the Florida Keys and around the Florida Peninsula, reaching Grand Bahama on July 8. They were surprised to come across another Spanish ship, piloted by Diego Miruelo, who was either on a slaving voyage or had been sent by Diego Colón to spy on Ponce de Leon. Shortly thereafter Miruelo's ship was wrecked in a storm and Ponce de Leon rescued the stranded crew. From here the little fleet disbanded. Ponce de Leon tasked the Santa Maria with further exploration while he returned home with the rest of crew. Ponce de Leon reached Puerto Rico on October 19 after having been away for almost eight months. The other ship, after further explorations returned safely on February 20, 1514. Although Ponce de Leon is widely credited with the discovery of Florida, he almost certainly was not the first European to reach the peninsula. Spanish slave expeditions had been regularly raiding the Bahamas since 1494 and there is some evidence that one or more of these slavers made it as far as the shores of Florida. Another piece of evidence that others came before Ponce de Leon is the Cantino map from 1502, which shows a peninsula near Cuba that looks like Florida's and includes characteristic place names. Topic. Fountain of Youth According to a popular legend, Ponce de Leon discovered Florida while searching for the Fountain of Youth. Though stories of vitality restoring waters were known on both sides of the Atlantic long before Ponce de Leon, the story of his searching for them was not attached to him until after his death. 
In his Historia General y Natural de las Indias of 1535, Gonzalo Fernández de Oviedo y Valdés wrote that Ponce de León was looking for the waters of Bimini to cure his aging. A similar account appears in Francisco López de Gomara's Historia General de las Indias of 1551. Then in 1575, Hernando de Escalani Fontaneda, a shipwreck survivor who had lived with the Native Americans of Florida for 17 years, published his memoir in which he locates the waters in Florida, and says that Ponce de Leon was supposed to have looked for them there. Though Fontaneda doubted that Ponce de Leon had really gone to Florida looking for the waters, the account was included in the Historia General de los Hechos de los Castellanos of Antonio de Herrera y Tordesillas of 1615. Most historians hold that the search for gold and the expansion of the Spanish Empire were far more imperative than any potential search for such a fountain. There is a possibility that the Fountain of Youth was an allegory for the Bahamian love vine, which locals brew today as an aphrodisiac. Ponce de Leon could have been seeking it as a potential entrepreneurial venture. Woodrow Wilson believed Indian servants brewing a brown tea in Puerto Rico may have inspired Ponce de Leon's search for the Fountain of Youth. Arn Molander has speculated that the adventurous conquistador mistook the natives' vid vine for vida life transforming their fountain vine into an imagined fountain of life. Topic. Between voyages Upon his return to Puerto Rico, Ponce de Leon found the island in turmoil. A party of Caribs from a neighboring island had attacked the settlement of Capara, killed several Spaniards and burned it to the ground. Ponce de Leon's own house was destroyed and his family narrowly escaped. Cologne used the attack as a pretext for renewing hostilities against the local Taino tribes. The explorers suspected that Cologne was working to further undermine his position on the island and perhaps even to take his claims for the newly discovered Florida. Ponce de Leon decided he should return to Spain and personally report the results of his recent expedition. He left Puerto Rico in April 1514 and was warmly received by Ferdinand when he arrived at court in Valladolid. There he was knighted and given a personal coat of arms, becoming the first conquistador to receive these honors. He also visited Casa de Contratación in Seville, which was the central bureaucracy and clearinghouse for all of Spain's activities in the New World. The Casa took detailed notes of his discoveries and added them to the Padron Real, a master map which served as the basis for official navigation charts provided to Spanish captains and pilots. During his stay in Spain, a new contract was drawn up for Ponce de Leon confirming his rights to settle and govern Bimini in Florida, which was then presumed to be an island. In addition to the usual directions for sharing gold and other valuables with the king, the contract was one of the first to stipulate that the requerimiento was to be read to the inhabitants of the islands prior to their conquest. Ponce de Leon was also ordered to organize an armada for the purpose of attacking and subduing the Caribs, who continued to attack Spanish settlements in the Caribbean. Three ships were purchased for his armada and after repairs and provisioning Ponce de Leon left Spain on May 14, 1515 with his little fleet. The record of his activities against the Caribs is vague. There was one engagement in Guadeloupe on his return to the area and possibly two or three other encounters. The campaign came to an abrupt end in 1516 when Ferdinand died. The king had been a strong supporter and Ponce de Leon felt it was imperative he return to Spain and defend his privileges and titles. He did receive assurances of support from Cardinal Francisco Jiménez de Cisneros, the regent appointed to govern Castile, but it was nearly two years before he was able to return home to Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, there had been at least two unauthorized voyages to his Florida both ending in repulsion by the native Calusa de Cuesta warriors. Ponce de Leon realized he had to act soon if he was to maintain his claim. Topic. Last voyage to Florida. In early 1521, Ponce de Leon organized a colonizing expedition consisting of some 200 men, including priests, farmers and artisans, 50 horses and other domestic animals, and farming implements carried on two ships. The expedition landed somewhere on the coast of southwest Florida, likely in the vicinity of Charlotte Harbor or the Caloosahatchee River, areas which Ponce de Leon had visited in his earlier voyage to Florida. Before the settlement could be established, the colonists were attacked by the Calusa, the indigenous people who dominated southern Florida and whose principal town was nearby. 
Ponce de Leon was mortally wounded in the skirmish when, historians believe, an arrow poisoned with the sap of the manchineal tree struck his thigh. The expedition immediately abandoned the colonization attempt and sailed to Havana, Cuba, where Ponce de Leon soon died of his wounds. He was buried in Puerto Rico, in the crypt of San Jose Church from 1559 to 1836, when his remains were exhumed and transferred to the Cathedral of San Juan Bautista. See also Juan Ponce de Leon II Juan Ponce de Leon y Loaiza Ahuabana the Great Son Ahuabana II Hayuya Jumacao Discoverer of the Americas Tequesta La Florida Bibliography Topic References Topic External Links Ponce de Leon, Juan Appleton Cyclopedia of American Biography, 1900. Yale University Genocide Studies on Puerto Rico. Turner, Samuel P. 2012. The Caribbean World of Juan Ponce de Leon and His Discovery of Florida. Paper presented at the Culturally La Florida Conference, May 3–6, St. Augustine, Florida.